Hey folks, it's Ray at DCBrandRecord.com and today we have a complete sport and fitness look at the new Apple Watch Series 7. Now in this video, I'm gonna walk through first what's new on this watch just at a general level compared to the Series 6. And then from there, I'm gonna go into all the new sport and fitness features. And then after that, we're gonna go run outside, like literally run outside. Uh, and I'm gonna kind of take it through its paces from a pretty hard workout with some pretty hard environmental conditions. And then we're gonna come back inside and do another hard workout uh, to see how it handles from a heart rate standpoint there. Then we'll look at all that data and then I'll kind of give you some overall recommendations in the general like sport and fitness realm. Okay, so with that all set, let's talk about what's changed at the hardware level. Uh, and the first thing is the display. The display is about 20% larger than the Series 6 display, but not the case. The case is only about a millimeter bigger. Instead, they shrunk the bezels to get the larger display. Uh, and you can certainly notice that. And within that larger display, they've in turn added bigger user interface buttons on the screen. Not that the buttons themselves on the outside are identical in the past, but they use bigger interface buttons uh, within the menus and a handful of their own apps. That also translates into things like larger keyboard, uh, as well as a longer text message size. Anything that shows text now shows more text. Next is that Apple claims at 70% brighter indoors, in particular for the scenario where you're not actually actively looking at it, but want to see it on your wrist in the always on display mode. And if I put it side by side with the Series 6 on my wrist in that sort of passive display mode, uh, it does look a little bit brighter. I'm not sure if it's like 70% brighter, but it seems like barely brighter than the Series 6. In the realm of the display, Apple says they've gone ahead and increased the durability of it by increasing the thickness of the crystal of the display by 50%, uh, so it's more durable. I've personally never had problems with the Apple Watches being durable. I've beat the crap out of them and they're still fine. Uh, I'm not about to go like hit this with a hammer just for the sake of seeing it's durable. That's something I think most people figure out over time. Uh, but 50% sounds better than no percent, I guess. Speaking of no percent, actually, uh, the battery has increased no percent. Uh, so it's still the same claimed 18 hours of battery life, uh, which means that you're probably going to get about a day of actual usage. In other words, you're going to be charging every single day. The good news, though, there is that there's new quick or faster charging using both the new charging puck as well as technology in the Apple Watch Series 7. That means it'll go from zero to 80 percent in about 45 minutes. But probably more notable from a fitness standpoint is that Apple says you can put it on that charger. Uh, in eight minutes, you'll have enough for eight hours of sleep tracking. So if you're running kind of tight in battery at the end of the day, just throw it on the charger next to the bed. By the time you brush your teeth and do all that jazz, then this thing should be ready to, to get through itself through the night. Still, none of that stuff is sport and fitness. So instead, let's talk what's new in sport and fitness. And everything new here is actually from a watch OS 8, which means it's going to all the recent Apple Watches. So it's not really Apple Watch Series 7 specific, but it just come along with this whole package. And I'm going to talk about it briefly before we talk about the accuracy of this particular unit. So first up on the new sport and fitness features is is the new cycling detection or automatic cycling detection. This means that when you're riding outdoors, within a couple of minutes of you start riding, it'll pop up a message on the screen saying, hey, would you like to start recording this ride? And you can tap that and it'll start recording. What's interesting though, is it actually backdates that particular recording. Uh, it doesn't backdate the start of the GPS side of it, but it does backdate uh, some of the heart rate bits and stuff like that. Uh, and so you can get around to pressing that button whenever you can. Still, I wouldn't consider this like a replacement for pressing the start button because it does kind of vary. I've been using it over the last month. Uh, and what I found is that sometimes it's like within a minute and a half or so, and sometimes it's like five or six minutes. It's useful as a quick reminder uh, in case you forgot to press the start button to go ahead and do that and then get on with your workout. Oh, hey, and a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting or useful, simply whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Next, there's the new fall detection, uh, crash detection during workouts, but in particular during cycling, uh, which is the new bit here. Uh, in the past, Apple has had fall detection on their watches, but they've now extended it to cycling. Uh, as much as I'd like to both smash this with a hammer from back there and then go crash my bike into a bus to see if it works. I'm going to trust Apple on this one. And then the last item that is both sport and fitness, but very much not sport and fitness, is that Apple now allows apps to leverage the always on display in their app itself. In the past, apps actually couldn't do that. Uh, when you put your wrist down like this, it basically went into like a time screen mode. Uh, but now apps can do that, which could be really interesting for sport and fitness apps. Of course, at the moment, most apps have not been updated to do that. Uh, for example, the Strava app, uh, as of today anyways, still shows the time as soon as I put my wrist back down again. Uh, but I expect apps will adopt that pretty quickly. Still, all of those features are on watchOS 8. They're not specific to the Series 7. 
The question then becomes, are there changes in the Series 7 that aren't necessarily talked about that might make it either more or less accurate for workouts? So the only way to find out is to do some extra workouts. And I'm looking for kind of data in two areas. One is how does GPS handle outside in both easy as well as tough conditions? And then how does optical heart rate handle uh, both outside and inside through easy and tough conditions? So with that, let's start off with the run. Now a quick overview of the comparative devices I have here. I have the Apple Watch Series 7. I have the Garmin 4Runner 745. And on this wrist over here, I have the Apple Watch SE. And then up here at the edge, I have got the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4. Uh, now in the case of the two watches that are not on my wrist but are on my hand, I'm not gonna use heart rate from those. Instead, I'm gonna use heart rate from the Polar H10 chest strap here paired to the Garmin watch. And then I also have up under here, I have the Whoop 3.0 band. So with that, let's get rolling. First up, some light trail running. Then some nice curving paths to see how well it tracks. A little bit deeper tree cover, to see how it handles in here. Okay, we got a nice chunk of straightaway here before we get to some bridge and tunnels up ahead. So I'm gonna use this for a bit of a heart rate test. Gonna go threshold for the first sprint, uh, and then I'll do something that basically like falls to the wall for the second sprint. I will put the camera down so it doesn't interfere with uh, the heart rate on the sprints. Okay, this next section is a series of bridges. I have to be forming tunnels here. They go in and out. Super difficult for GPS uh, because it sees it briefly and then loses it again. You can see each one of these little sections here. I often use it for GPS testing and doing the same here today as well. Things would not be complete without a loop around the track. See how it holds, how close to the actual track lane I'm in and I'll probably throw a sprint on the backside there. Okay, so with the run complete, here we are with a fairly intense interval workout. Actually, it's a little bit more intense than I had planned. Uh, I thought this would be like intense, but this actually ended up being a really beastly little workout. Now, in this case, I was actually using Apple's gym kit capability, which means it can link to certain fitness devices. Uh, here, I've got the Peloton Bike Plus, uh, which means it transmits the heart rate data from the Apple Watch Series 7 straight to the Peloton bike. So it displays my heart rate on the Peloton bike. And then inversely, the Apple Watch gets more detailed information from the Peloton bike, including distance and speed, as well as more accurate calorie information using the power data or power meter data uh, from that particular bike. So with the pain done, let's quickly look at the data here. And starting off first with that bike ride. Uh, so on this chart right now, you've got the Apple Watch SE from one side, the Apple Watch Series 7 from the other side. Uh, you have a Polar H10 chest strap, and then you've got the Whoop 3.0 band as well. The Whoop is the brown one there that's kind of all over the place. The other three are identical. Like they are crazy identical. Really, really good here. I mean, it's a spot on kind of accuracy uh, that I see like once a year. I'm, I'm really, really impressed with this. Next, let's switch over to that run. Starting off with the GPS side, again, this is surprisingly good. I, I'm not used to seeing this good a GPS from Apple, uh, especially near launch day. Usually it takes a while for that to, to finalize. But as I go through this run here, there's virtually like no major errors. There's a couple minor errors. For example, there's one part here uh, towards the bottom in the woods where the Series 7 meanders a bit off the side by maybe 10 meters or so compared to the other units. Uh, but it then pulls back in within 100 meters or so after that, so it's not off a very long. Uh, there's a couple sections of straightaway where the Series 7 is off to the side as well uh, by, again, about 10 meters, uh, kind of offset into some buildings. Uh, and not, you know, dramatically off, but it's certainly in the buildings as opposed to on the bike path. For both directions of the under the bridge tunnel pass, it's really clean there. Uh, and no major obvious errors. As I snuggle up against Olympic Stadium, uh, running under kind of the edge of that, uh, again, really clean there, no major problems. As we get down to the running track, it's pretty interesting. Uh, the Series 7 did cut a little bit off of one of the uh, corners there. You can see that on the left-hand side. Uh, but perhaps more interesting than that is it finally didn't cut the corners getting on and off the track. I've been doing that little like nuanced part of the test every single year uh, that the Apple Watch has come out. And every single year, it cuts the corner off entirely. Uh, and this time, it, it finally didn't do it. Now it did again trim slightly uh, the track itself, but uh, not a ton. And then finally, on one of the last straightaways coming back, uh, you can see the Series 7 is slightly offset again into the brush. But again, we're talking like three to five meters off the path compared to both the SC and the 745 are like exactly on that particular path. But I don't think most people care about that being, you know, like three meters off or so in a handful of places. But I think overall between the combination of Apple Watch Series 7 as well as Watch OS 8, which probably has some factor into that in terms of their algorithms, uh, these are some of the best tracks I've seen. Oh, in the Samsung Watch, in case you're wondering why it's not on here, I've been trying for an hour and a half to get it to sync the run off of the watch and it's refusing to connect my phone. I've done all the restarts and whacking it and all the things and 
I'm, I'm just giving up at this point. Uh, now, as far as heart rate goes on this particular run, really damn good. It's as simple as that. Uh, only the Apple Watch SE made a couple of minor errors at the very beginning where you can see it got confused briefly at the very, very start uh, and kind of got delayed there. And then again, well, like two minutes into it, it got a bit confused for a couple seconds. Uh, but the Series 7 virtually matched identically to the Polar H10 chest strap. Uh, that blue line there you see is a WHIP 3.0 strap uh, being a bit low. Uh, hopefully that's something that we see fixed with the WHIP 4.0 uh, sensor here that should be out any day now, hopefully. Okay, so with the data aside, where do we stand? Ultimately, I think this is one of the best Apple Watch launches I've seen in terms of actually having accurate GPS data and heart rate data on day one. Uh, that's something that hasn't always happened in the past for Apple. There's always been caveats, always been, ah, oh, the heart rate's good, but the GPS isn't so much, and it takes months to maybe fix, or maybe not at all. Finally, like, both things are really solid without any meaningful caveats on both of them. Uh, so that is good to see. Of course, as always, the Apple Watch won't be for every single athlete. The base features in the watch are generally more focused at the general fitness side of it than at, for example, the endurance athletic side of it. Uh, still, there are countless apps that you can install and download for the Apple Watch that do start to bridge those gaps. For example, on the running side, you can pair it up with the Stride running power meter uh, for those that want you know, running power and a little more advanced data metrics there. On the swimming side, you can pair it up with Forms open water swim goggles and see your goggles, see your data in your goggles itself uh, from the Apple Watch and open water swimming. So those sort of things exist just like they exist as well uh, in the hiking realm with maps and stuff like that that you can load on there. All that stuff is there, but it's just not there in one particular app. So you got to kind of like be like a squirrel and collect all the nuts and bring them back to your little hut uh, and then have all the tools that you need in different apps. And that's where that differs from one of those sport watches, whether it be from Garmin or Suunto or Polar or Chorus or whoever out there. All those watches out there tend to have features that are more designed from an athletic standpoint, whether it be structured workout programs or connectivity to more detailed sensors or more detailed data, um, or just simply long ass battery life that can go like 200 hours uh, on GPS on a single charge. So as an endurance athlete, it's probably not my main cup of tea for longer adventures. It is something that I definitely appreciate as more of the day-to-day -day watch. There is no watch out there that is as nuanced in features and the integration into the larger Apple ecosystem as the Apple Watch. Uh, so from like a daily wear standpoint, I love wearing the Apple Watch, but from like a workout standpoint, I'm going to tend to go with some of their competitors, which gave me the features that I need. Anyways, hopefully you found this interesting or useful. If so, go ahead and watch that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Also, I should have a complete write-up, a full in-depth review as well of the Apple Watch Series 7 with tons more data up on the site here shortly. With that, have a good one.